well. So it is a pleasure to have together with us the Honorable Marco Huanco. So he's the chairman of the House Committee in Nuclear Energy in Philippines. Welcome. Thank you for joining us in the Net Zero Nuclear Pavilion. Uh, thank you for inviting me, Sama, to this uh, very prestigious new initiative, Net Zero Nuclear, a joint effort between EMEC and uh, World Nuclear Association. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm so honored. Uh, uh, and it's a very big privilege to be here with you. It is lovely to have you. We really want to hear what is happening in, in Philippines when yes. it comes to nuclear energy. Well, uh, I have been a nuclear advocate uh, for 17 years now, since 2007, when I was informed by our Department of Finance that our nuclear plant, 100% complete, uh, was fully paid for. Mm -hmm. uh, for the amount of 2.12 billion US dollars wow. and uh, 699 million of that was out-of-pocket interest. Out-of-pocket because we never ran the plant since uh, 1986 in spite of uh, the Philippines having a uh, power crisis, uh, the highest uh, electricity price in the region. Wow. And that is because of unfounded fears of uh, nuclear, uh, because of uh, the anti-nuclear movement in the world uh, in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we had a pending power crisis in 2013. And I said, we have a fully paid for nuclear plant. We have an impending power crisis. Why not run this, this plant? So I filed a bill. Unfortunately, I ran out of time to see it through. I had uh, a majority of the House as co-authors at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Fukushima happened mm -hmm. in 2011. Uh, although my fa my wife who replaced me, because I, I did three ter term limits, mm -hmm. uh, my wife replaced me and uh, filed a similar bill. And she had even more co-authors than I. Mm -hmm. right? But then Fukushima happened and we declared a moratorium on our advocacy and on the bill because we wanted to know what happened to, to the plant. Of course. If there was a real failure of containment, maybe I would not be pro-nuclear today. Right, right. Maybe I would be anti-nuclear. Mm -hmm. But then after a few years, we continued reports and we found out that uh, uh, the radiation there is still lower than the background in Seattle or Denver. Uh, in Denver and yeah. so we said, uh, well, containment works in spite of a triple meltdown. Nobody was hurt, nobody was injured. Maybe this makes the case for nuclear safety rather than destroys the case. Mm -hmm. And so we, we uh, fought again. Uh, my wife was a congresswoman until 2016. And then I ran for governor. Mm -hmm. and she ran for re-election, we both lost. Oh. But in 2022, I decided to return uh, after 12 years. And I won in uh, another district of Pangasinan, the district of my opponents. Okay. And uh, now I'm pushing again uh, in the house and we filed the bill consolidated from 13 authors uh, on nuclear regulation. Perfect. And uh, this uh, bill uh, uses the language of the IAEA. So we had we hired an international nuclear law expert, uh, attorney Helen Cook of Australia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, all the authors liked the bill so much that they endorsed it right away. So we consolidated it into one bill. And uh, just a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, it passed the House 200 yes seven no wow and two abstentions congratulations so finally we have this uh, legal framework which sets the the method for waste disposal mm -hmm. and sets the uh, amount uh, to be collected per kilowatt hour to pay for this disposal uh, when the time comes mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, end of life decommissioning trust fund regulatory mm -hmm. fund uh, fee Mm -hmm. And so it is set up to be independent of any department in the Philippine government. Wow. Totally independent. Very cool. So uh, I'm waiting now for the progress at the Senate. I think we have a lot of numbers there. 
So I see this bill passing in three, four months, maybe at the most wow. six months. So we are going to be watching very closely what is happening in Philippines because clearly you are starting to do your part to, to achieve this decarbonization. After, after this, no, uh, we already passed it in our committee in the House, the nuclear liability law. Mm. which defines the operator as being ultimately liable mm -hmm. so that uh, if anything happens, uh, they can collect uh, insurance money uh, up to 350 million SDRs, about 450 million US dollars, mm. uh, which is by law you have to get insurance for that. Right. So I think the same in Europe. Yeah, yeah, this is... As is uh, standard comes, practice. And yeah. then after that, we will file the uh, Nuclear Incentives Act which uh, sets the pay for nuclear workers. We want the pay to be high mm -hmm. because we want quality people. Of we don't want a big turnover. Uh, and then it will give uh, the tax incentives and the other benefits for nuclear investment. Okay, well, so you really are on your way. Yeah. So let me ask you this. You are here right now in Dubai at COP28. Yeah. What are your big hopes and your big expectations from this Actually, gathering? Actually, my expectations for... This is the first COP I ever attended. Okay, okay. And my expert expectations are more than fulfilled because I was contacted uh, by uh, the UAE uh, uh, authorities uh, on nuclear and uh, invited to to uh, attend the declaration where uh, UK, France, Sweden, USA, uh, there's one more. Finland. Finland. Oh, and uh, and uh, UAE mm -hmm. declared that uh, they recognized the contribution of nuclear power to reducing pollution mm. and uh, fighting, being a, a good weapon to fight against global warming and climate change. Mm -hmm. And uh, they uh, are, are pushing that the world, the entire world, nuclear capacity installed capacity will be increased by three times okay. uh, before 2050 and that really made my day okay that made my trip here all worthwhile now i have a new message to tell uh, uh, the politicians and the public in the philippines that uh, nuclear is on the way not only here but in the entire world everywhere right? so uh, i think we can put to rest all these uh, unfounded uh, fears of nuclear. I've always approached it on a fact, factual basis. Exactly. So I've always tried to answer, I've always tried to remove politics from my uh, advocacy and only address the facts. You know, this is also, I don't know if you remember on Saturday in that, in that uh, ceremony of the declaration, yeah. this is exactly what the Minister of Energy of Sweden yeah. <coughs> mentioned, yes. that we needed to remove politics yes. from energy policy exactly. and put back uh, facts. Science, science, facts, physics. and, and yes. pragmatism. Yes. So and you perfect. know what other thing excited me was the mention by, I'm not sure if it was uh, Secretary Kerry, who, uh, special envoy Kerry, who mentioned that uh, up to $9.2 trillion will be made available to finance this. Mm. Because if you are a poor country like the Philippines, uh, you know, fin financing for this is, uh, is a major It's important, issue. yeah. But uh, there are some countries, uh, especially like the Philippines, like Japan, Mm -hmm. Our context is that uh, we do not have indigenous uh, fossil fuel. We do not have coal, we do not have gas. So our population is exported to work abroad here right. in Emirates, Saudi Arabia, all over Europe, mm -hmm. uh, Southeast Asia, the richer countries, because we are so poor. Mm. And uh, the money they earn and they send back to the Philippines we should not use it to import fossil fuels just to burn. Right. We should use it as capital to build our country. Exactly, and it is a catalyst for social economic development. And if development. we have nuclear, we can avoid billions of dollars every year in importing all of these fossil exactly. fuels. Because exactly. 
like if it's uh, 200, 300 uh, million dollars a year for a one gigawatt coal plant, for nuclear it's 30 million dollars. Right. So there's a big, big, big difference. difference. No, no, I and you are right. I think that this declaration had this specific uh, call from governments, yeah. from World Bank and other multilateral yeah. development institutions before, to support nuclear projects. Uh, if you talk to World Bank, they will not touch nuclear. Right. But maybe well, so now. maybe maybe they will start considering it. Well, so it is always a pleasure to talk to you. We will continue keeping uh, our eyes on what you are doing in yes. Philippines and yes. of course uh, you know that the, the entire nuclear family is here ready to support you. And I'm also ready to support you in any way I can do. Please feel free to contact me if mm -hmm. you want to organize visits. You can visit our nuclear plant. It's still open. It's not yet operating. I can tour you the plant. That's very cool. Show you actually. how well built our nuclear plant. That is very cool, actually. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks.